Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica and we are here in Autodesk Tinkercad and we are gonna be working in their circuits. We have a few videos, like one on how to make a circuit with an LED that will light up. We also made a paint box LED using a red, green, blue LED and a typical normal switch, a slider switch. We also have a tutorial on a new type of switch using motion detection to then act as our switch to light up this LED. And today we're actually gonna use something new in addition to our LEDs and our resistors, we are gonna learn how to use a capacitor in a very simple circuit. So in this circuit, you're gonna to wanna to go to your circuits and you'll want to create new. And in this one, it'll be our first capacitor circuit. We'll learn how they act kind of like batteries and we'll call it our fading LED. So we will turn on our LED and it will fade off nice and slow. We'll start by pulling a breadboard out into the middle and we also need some power. So we'll bring that over. We want two to three of these AA batteries. So what we can do is we are going to change our count from one battery to two batteries. And the way you get that, if you're not seeing it, is make sure you click on the battery area. You'll see the blue outline. And then in the upper right hand corner usually, sometimes you can move this around. Oh, maybe you can't. So it'll be in our upper right hand corner and it'll give us the count of batteries. So you can pick two batteries and we will connect our positive into the red plus power rail here and we will connect the negative into our minus black power rail and to be good with our wires not only can we make them nice and straight by clicking there we can also make them red and black so that we know where things are going and what they are doing all right so our circuit is just about ready to be powered up now we need to wire it up. So we're gonna use a push button and I usually like to add the push buttons so that they sort of hang out across this gap. If you have a real breadboard and a real push button, they will line up just like this, which is great. So now we need to wire up our push button and we want to wire it up to be what we call hot or high. So we're going to drag this to one of the sides. We're gonna change it to red so that we know that that's hot. And then this will also come out and it will also be hot. So when we press the button, it'll sort of connect this wire with this wire so that we can then go on to our capacitor. So the capacitor is our new unit or our new circuit item this time. I'm going to flip these around so we can see how we wire them up a little better. So right now it's outlined in blue and in this upper left-hand corner, we have a rotate button. And so you can click that till it's upside down and that will rotate it around. Now the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna light up an LED because we wanted a fading LED. So I'm gonna put that in there and also rotate it around. Now capacitors, they only have terminals. They don't have a cathode or an anode or a negative or positive part to them. So it does not matter how we hook these up. So we can hook one side up to what we call the hot right here and we can hook the other one up to ground. All right, and we're gonna color our ground black as per our normal notation. Now I'm going to, I could just connect this straight, but you might remember, Dr. Erica, we have to use resistors and you would be right. So I'm gonna bring a resistor out. I'm gonna rotate it here and we're gonna add this resistor right here so that it is gonna have the connection straight to the battery basically. When I push this button down, it'll turn the LED on and that will go into my anode. I'm just gonna pull this over so that the leg of the anode and this other part of the battery or of the resistor are touching each other. So that they're in this line of green dots and that means that they are actually connected. And then I will connect this up to ground also to complete my circuit. Now I can change what these values are by clicking on them and outlining them in blue. I don't need my resistor to be huge. I think about 100 ohms will be more than enough to make it so that this does not get too bright and throw an error. The capacitance, you, we can change and that will change our fade. So we can take a look and see how upping or um, increasing or decreasing our capacitance changes how long it takes for this LED to fade out. And then to see how this is working, we click Start Simulation in the upper right. 
I can push this button down, my LED turns on, and you'll notice it sort of fades out as I lift this off. And that's because when I push this button down, there's actually charge from the battery going into this capacitor. And capacitors are sort of kind of like their own little batteries. You charge them up. You don't get to choose when they discharge. They sort of just discharge through this. And it acts as a little battery that will slowly go away. They're very small batteries, which is why our LED goes out. But you can imagine if we increase our capacitance, so let's go from nanofarads to microfarads, we can now look at what happens with that fade. I always like to stop and start my simulation after I change something. So we're still fading out, but pretty quickly. If we go from microfarads to millifarads, we can now again press this button so we're allowing it to store more charge. And you'll notice now it's fading out a lot slower. All right, so we turn the battery on, we charge up this capacitor, and now it's gonna slowly fade out. So this LED is being not powered by the battery right now, because there's no circuit that goes to the battery right now. This button is not pushed. It's all coming from this capacitor. This capacitor is discharging its charge through that LED. And because it's a really big capacitor, it's discharging it and it's allowed to turn that LED on for a long time. It's got a lot of current that it can push through this LED. Maybe I make this 10 microfarads so that we can see it a little better. We can see how it's dimming, but much more slowly than it was before and actually much more quickly than when we have 100 millifarads. So this is a great way to see how these capacitors act as their own tiny little batteries inside circuits. We can use that to either make choices or we can use that to make things that flash on and off. There's a lot of uses for capacitors in circuits and we will be building some circuits with those in it. So this is a great way to check those out. Thank you so much for joining me in this project and I hope that you enjoy the rest of our Tinkercad circuit tutorials. Have a great day.